just can't give up stuff now. So this was the question I was going to ask next. Oh, Here we are, are we, TP we're, talk. We're, we're getting into this. Okay, this is officially the silly part of the show, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we're back. We're going to talk about trading Jalen Brown and Bradley B and all this. Okay, okay. I'm just asking you this. If, if, if you had to make a big splash, does this do it? Hey, I've been saying that. No. This is not guy. do it. For, who says no? how much you like Jalen. Style and fit, players. Is there is there anything Beal does for this team currently that Jalen doesn't do? I don't know. I don't. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do Jalen. Now you might need to, but again, you're swapping out something that you need for the system that you want to carry forward. You want a big three there. Now I dump everything. You know, seven picks, Rob, Neesmith, uh, Langford, all that different kind of stuff. It might not be, be enough, but my scenario is if he ended up forcing his way here eventually, you kind of have the upper hand in that spot. So that's the only way they're going to do it. They would never flip Brown for him. So what's funny is you realize like 98% of the NBA would absolutely think that this is a win for Boston. But like here, right. it, it, it would be like we can't give up Jalen. It could be a win, but you're swapping out an all-star for an all-star. And that – I don't – it might move the needle a little bit, but – You'd still have an depth issue. You'd still have defensive concerns. It could, it could be a lateral move. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a lateral it sounds, move. That's a good way to put it. Sounds it. like a lateral move at best. You know, you want to put him next to those guys. You want to have him as the third guy. You know, when that contract is up, maybe sometime down the road, if the Celtics, you know, position themselves. But you don't want to swap out one of these all stars <laughs> for beef. You want to put him next to those two all stars. <laughs> That's Bobby's trade right there. <laughs> That's yeah, see, those picks. I never want to talk about comment. the draft again. That's a great comment. <laughs> man, J Jalen for Beal, would I do it? It's so tough, man. I mean, oh, it's here tough we go to again. That. Too many wings. It's just tough. It's tough to say no to to acquiring a guy like Beal. I mean, it's tough to say no to the to the leading scorer in the NBA. Yeah. But again, right? It's just tough. I mean, you're giving up. You're giving up Jalen Brown, and, and and with the idea that you actually think he could get better right than he are than he is i think beal is as good as you're ever you know and he's very good but i don't think he's going to get any better Listen, did, whereas, yeah but those two he those, just those did two right lot, maybe it's just me but it reminds me a lot of lebron and, and d wade it would be very very similar you know their approach and the way they would attack you need three i mean did brooklyn give up Kyrie for harden you know, you do whatever you can to just get those three together, trade I, everything else. I don't think you do it because of the lateral move uh, aspect of it, but it is an interesting uh, – uh, Now, they've been really good. Tonight would have been eight out of nine for them. So they're trending in the right direction. That, yeah. the, would the scenario I played out early in the year is kind of gone for them right now. They're going to be in the playoff picture deep into the year probably. Because I know we – Stop talking about it, but I just want to reiterate that the whole Rob oh, thing and this. treating him. What we said in the show last show, John, is that you one of the reasons why Danny Ainge might not want to make a, a deal right now is because if he can hang on to Rob for the rest of the season and through the playoffs, which is another reason why you don't tank, and Rob puts together some good performances, you really do have a good tradable asset to put with the TPE, and you can. Now you can talk about maybe a, a Beal like levels trade. If I'm not saying that that's all can't do Beal then. He's I know, 35 not, million after this year. No, I, I get that, but I'm talking about a, that caliber of a player with the TPE involved. Because of right now, you really can't get that great of a player with the TPE because again, you don't have a whole lot of assets to put with it. We I know that we've really talked about this a lot, but. Now it's starting to say, okay, you might have you might have something here in Rob, right? So if you hold on to that and he puts together a solid season and a solid postseason, you have something to offer, which is better than not having anything to offer. Whether or not you end up pulling the trigger or not on the deal, you at least have that option now. Hey, I, I think you got to push the issue on it. You need stuff now. You can always trade that stuff later. I wouldn't. You're going to tank a season if you don't add stuff now. I keep saying this. They're way too thin. If they get injured come playoff time, they're an automatic out at that point. If you get injured come playoff time, that's you, the way you it is. Live with it. That happens all yeah. the time. You know? Yeah. What's going to happen? It's going to happen almost every year. You need pieces I mean, in place look, that allow you to sustain. You're talking about having to go for it, Bobby. You're talking about aging superstars, and they've just 
on the downside of their prime and your window is closing with these guys. This right. isn't the case. You have your two superstars locked up who haven't even hit their peak yet. Yeah, so but I, no, I think what you there is no single season desperation surrounded like surrounding this year. If they tank or they go one and done in the first round, so be or someone gets hurt and they fall, you know, down and they're in an eight seed, so be it. You re, you you reload. Yeah, I mean you right. come back with in the 25, uh, 25 and under if superstars. It, it, if you don't get something in the off season at that point, you're you're losing this twenty eight million dollar hole forever. Like, Maybe it's a gamble. We all know it's, it's a, a gamble. massive gamble bringing it's in the off season. If, if you, but it, it's no worse than squandering it on nothing. You gamble for using a, it now too. Using it now for something that doesn't really do anything for you long term. You only make the you make the deal when the deal is there. And if it's yeah. and if you lose it, that's the gamble. But I get it. Like it's still better than throwing it away on crap right now just just to yeah. try and save this season like that makes no sense i'm you're, with you john right but now, no. it's you go ahead just but you're trying to you want to make it count you don't want to just use right. it to marginally improve well I'm, I'm with you on that john but i think it would be a, a, a colossal you know collapse if they were to get bounced out of the first round for obvious reasons but specifically the the, the thing that we talked about earlier in the show i mean those guys the the, the shemmies or or whoever you know nate neesmith rob williams you want to uh, get deep into the playoff because everyone will be watching. You want to put those guys on the national stage. And, and I think, yeah, you go into the TP, uh, you go into the offseason, and let's say you haven't used the TPE, at least now these guys, their stocks are, are higher than they ever were now. You know, we're talking, what, weeks away from the deadline or, or whatever it is. And you have a better chance to, to, to make a deal, you know, whereas in the past you didn't have a whole lot of assets to play with and you didn't have, you know, uh, you know, the TPE to, to, to plug in there to, to make a make a deal work. And now you do. And, and maybe the, a couple of those players, uh, there are teams out there that are, that are more likely to do a deal because one of those guys they really like and they saw what they did in the postseason. Eventually, there'll be sellers in this market. And at that point, the asking price isn't going to be smart. It's probably not even going to be Rob at that point. Like There's going to be deals out there. And I still think Barnes could end up in that place where the acquisition costs were there wouldn't be insane or you know, something you just can't do. Like, there's going to be, if they make an aggressive offer, especially with the picks, I think, there's going to be moves to be made this year. Like, again, I wouldn't be giving up the top-level assets for the role guys for the depth that they need, but they can't do nothing right now. And even Ainge, as hesitant as he was to use the TP in those interviews last week and Wick, they said they might use part of it because they know they need something. There's got to be something here. They can't do nothing with this team because the team's so thin they need so much right now. They're punting on a season of Tatum and Brown's prime. Even if you don't think they can win it all this year, you gotta, you gotta commit to it. You you're need not so punting. You're just playing it as it lies. You're always looking to improve. Playing it as it lies is a disaster. They that's lost the player and didn't replace them. I know, but that was, that's what happened. You know, like what do you so, mean they got? That's what he got. All he can. He did with it's those. Not always with an with option. To, like you can't always undo everything you've done. That's the thing is. Because they've always been so rich in assets, you could always say, well, just flip the picks for a star now. They don't have those assets anymore. Like I said, they have, they have this all of their picks. They have this piece of paper and some really crappy picks and a bunch of guys, young guys on the They're roster that don't have value yet. So it's not great. Point, picks. Yeah. How do you know? 2025, who knows what the team could look like then? Again, I mean, some protections it, on like, that, swaps. I, when you have Tatum and Brown locked up for yeah. the next. Especially years. in the Eastern Conference, Bobby, where you don't have to go 500 to make the playoffs. I mean, you can look into the Celtics' future and see that you're not going to get anything better than a 15 or 16 pick from them at at, war, at best in the next four years. It's not worth it. You're outside the lottery unless you have to get you have to go way into the future to get into to to think that you're going to get in the lottery just based on the fact that they have Brown and Tatum. Yeah, two guys under 25. Two guys hey. under 25 other stars. You can roll those guys out every year with uh, with this. You're, gonna make, it, you're gonna make the playoffs every single year. Into the playoffs. Yeah. Hey, I mean, there's definitely a risk to doing it now. There's risk to waiting as well. You you mentioned the advantages of waiting. There's teams with cap space. There's free agents that can't yeah. be acquired. Yeah, your pick's not as valuable at that point. Every team's wheeling and dealing. So there's a lot of more competition for different players at those spots. It, there's so much of a risk if you wait up until the last moment. I know the date isn't exact. I think it is next fall that the TP disappears. Uh, so there no, would be some time. Calendar year. Yeah. So into the fall, essentially. So 
the problem is the clock is just ticking so fast at that point. The sense of urgency is going to rise so high. The cost could even push higher at that point. Like I think the need this season to have an extra player, to have depth, to have you know a position that you don't have right now in the wing or point guard or wherever else, it's just so crucial to this team right now because I don't think this team's in a spot, even though I mentioned tanking a, few, a week ago, that you don't give up on this entirely. And you certainly don't do nothing. Like, sitting in the middle the way they are right now is just, it's not an option to me. It really isn't. Yep. They're rung below the best of the East, but they're too good to be getting any good sort of pick or anything like this point. And do we really want to be heading into the draft next year talking about who the Celtics are going to pick after these last couple of years? I mean, I want to have no pick whatsoever. I want to just sleep through draft night this summer. Are you, you upset, Bobby? Plenty of time to trade the pick. You don't need to trade it, like, by tomorrow. You still can like picks, wait. Have, picks have greater value when the people know what the picks are. No, I disagree. When there's a promise of it being like 15 or 16 right now, compared to whatever it could be, if, 19, it's, it's not going to be 15. It's not going to be that bad. That's about where they are right now. But there, I mean, I'd be surprised if it was that good of a pick. Maybe it will be fine. Throwing this out, argument, there. fine. Throwing this out there for the Beal people, this is the one scenario we've talked about where Beal is possible. The only scenario is he pulls a Harden and holds them hostage and says, trade me to Boston or else. That's, That's it. Coming. That's coming. No, sure. but I mean, it has to be, it has to be Boston. Boston or else. And I do not believe... That's my conspiracy. Scenario. Well, no, Tommy knows it's going to be. It's going to be the short list of teams, you know. And but on the know. short list, again, if it's Boston, Miami, I, I still think no matter who we're up against, who the Celtics are up against, they're gonna have they're gonna be short on assets. Yeah. Has any player ever right. demanded a trade to Boston? I mean, what are we like? We're, this is what we it's do. The Tatum the thing, Jimmy. Do. They. I who does he want to play with? Buddies. Yeah, but Jimmy. Yeah, he you can make a list. You don't think Boston can make it on that? Can make it on that list? Maybe they can make it on that list, but they they still need to have a good good trade package to get him. Hey. Just because he wants to go to a certain team doesn't mean the Wizards are going to bend over backwards. All you have to do, everything I've said tonight, everything I've said tonight, you just have to look at that Rockets-Nets deal. I know it was ridiculous, and the Rockets have done some stupid things, but Harden strong arm them in such a way that all it took was some picks and a couple players and another team to get involved. Like, it if he's really players. pushing yeah, Boston. Yeah, he yeah. traded good players and a lot of picks. A yeah, but trade. see, what did, we, what did we talk about last show, Jimmy, though? What do we, who do we compare Robert Williams to? You know, how did that deal get done? That was a big part of that, right? That's a big pillar. Someone like Jared Allen. If yep. they don't Williams, have a if his, stock, if, his, if his stock rises up, you know, maybe he's the Jared Allen of the trade. Maybe Neesmith is uh, Levert. You know, it, it just it's just too early to say right now. But I think Bradley Beal down the road, absolutely, 100%. If they don't get things together in Washington, which is a really good chance of that, I think he demands a trade. And if he makes a short list, you, you don't think Boston's on that list? I think 100%. Oh, absolutely. He, he yeah. knows going into the situation what it's going to be. Playing next to Jason Tatum, playing for someone like Brad Stevens. These two, they talk about this stuff all the time, you know? They, they, coming up from, from, from St. Louis together, the background, everything. Yeah.